Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, the resource to help you navigate the world of insurance. There is a lot of misunderstanding about what insurance is and what insurance isn't. Let me help you demystify insurance and have some fun while we're at it. Informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. And how is everyone doing today? It is your host, Carl Sussman, today on Insurance Hour. Remember, you can catch us anytime live and recorded and call in today at 559-656-0317 with questions. You can catch this as a podcast. You can catch this as a YouTube channel rerun. You name it. If you're missing any of this or you want to see more, you can always catch us there. Today, we have a very special guest. I'm super excited. Can you tell? I've got all the adrenaline going because we have an absolute expert in, in I, I, let me just read you her bio, right? And then you're just going to be bowing down like I am. I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. We have Cindy Thomas from the Insiders Career Club. And a little bit about Cindy. She obtained her BS degree in kin- kinesiology and physical education from California State University, East Bay. In college, she started working for Oakland Parks and Rec, teaching dance to children and adults. Later, she taught at St. Elizabeth's High School and then pivoted to her education experience in uh, in education and training role in Oakland Youth Works, combining her love of education and business. This is clearly, clearly a people person. Then <laughs> into as an HR professional with a career spanning over 25 years, HR, our favorite human resources, she found her niche as a recruiter and has been a senior recruiter, recruiting manager, director of talent acquisition, and principal recruiting consultant. I told you there was a lot here. <laughs> Her expertise, including working in multiple industries like healthcare, IT, manufacturing at Clorox and Mother's Cookies, small biotechs and pharmaceutical companies, Art Lab, Amgen, uh, which is, I guess, part of uh, a division of, Fi- of Pfizer, which is global blood therapeutics. I mean, I, I could go on, 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 on. She knows her stuff. She's the founder and host of the Your Career Insider. It's a podcast that you can get. You should definitely check it out. Her podcast ranked 20 in last year as one of the best job search platform uh, podcasts from thousands of other podcasts that talk about job search. So again, this is the go-to person when it comes to everything I just tried to rattle off and more. Cindy, hopefully I didn't botch that too much. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here, Carl. So thanks for the invite and um, looking forward to sharing a lot of information with your listeners. Terrific. I, I appreciate it. I, I know that at first blush, people are thinking, wait, this is an insurance show. Mm-hmm. What is what is this? And I have to tell you very quickly. And I've, what what seems clear to me being in the insurance industry is <laughs> the issue of human resources and how that can turn into litigation and how that can affect oh, workers' yes. comp insurance and all sorts of those connections mm-hmm. that happen. That makes us brethren, I'll tell you, because oh, the, what, yeah. what happens in the workplace always has an impact on employers, workers' comp, like I said, their potential mm-hmm. liability, and the list goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. When, I, when, I, when, I found, <laughs> when I found you, I thought, <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, I, I don't know where to even begin, but I think the most important, not the most important, the first thing is, other than what I just rattled off, tell us a little bit about your, <laughs> I know, right? Every I, I wanted to get it done so we could talk to you. I I, I can't help it. I, I'm I'm much better at talking to people than reading from uh, from bios. But tell okay. tell us about yourself. Tell us how did you get involved in this personally? How was what was your journey to get involved in this with the Insiders Career Club? Well, specifically, sure. Let's let's work back from the most recent going backward. I was going to say okay. what made you get in, okay. involved in everything else, but sure. All right. Well, if you wanted me to, to start from, you know, just the beginning, I went to school to be a teacher and thought I would be a teacher. I come from a family of teachers. My grandfather was a teacher. My in-laws are teachers. I mean, there's teachers all over the place, nieces, all of them. So, um, you know, it was it's kind of like the family business, I guess. And um, when I got to college, I wasn't sure what I was going to major in. And I just decided I was a I guess it. What's the female jerk uh, version of jock? Jockette? <laughs> I don't know. 
Talk it. <laughs> you you were just super athletic. I'll go with that for sure. I was very sure. athletic. Yes, okay. I played sports uh, all year round and uh-huh. um, was very good at it and loved it. And uh, so when I got to college, I thought, oh, you know what? I might as well be a PE major. I'll teach. I'll be a PE uh, teacher like my one of my favorite teachers in high school. So isn't it amazing how sometimes you remember like one teacher will have that type of an impact on you? Oh, uh, well, I continue to have, a career. you know, interact with her. I would go back to the school and chat with her. And because she was just that good of a person, mm-hmm. everybody loved her. Her mm-hmm. name was Miss Coyne, Pat Coyne from St. Elizabeth's. I taught at the school I went to. So um, she's just a lovely person. Um, and so, yeah, that's for all you teachers out there. Just remember the impact you have on children's lives. So um, a thankless job, truly, that everybody mm-hmm. that we we can't we literally can't thank them enough. My sister is a, no. a special ed teacher, so really? I, I know the the level of work they do and the level oh, of abuse they take is yeah. definitely not in sync with how it should mm-hmm. be. Yeah, it's a it's a really tough job, but one of the most important that there are around because they are shaping uh, young people's lives. And if they do it correctly, they, you know, move people on, they grow them, they um, ignite the fire in their minds and in their hearts. And they, you know, they want to learn more, they want to do more, they want to be exposed to more. That's what a good teacher does for you. And I had lots of good instructors. It worked for you. So, so, teaching, so teaching was the, uh, was, the, was the first stop for sure. Mm-hmm, was the first stop. And then when I got to college, um, what we didn't have, because I went to a small private Catholic school, um, they didn't have a lot of activities that you would find at a college. So uh, we had no swimming pool. We, we, you know, we had no dance classes. I took my first dance class. And quite secretly, as a child, I wanted to take dance lessons and was too shy to ask for them. <laughs> um, but when I got to college, I went, OK, I'm going to take dance classes. And I fell in love with dance. And so. Um, my degree, even though it's in kines- it's kinesiology. It's I'm sorry, I butchered it. Yes, <laughs> kinesiology. And believe it or not, I practiced. <laughs> and that was still the best I could do of it. Kinesiology. Yeah. I'm with way, you now. You just say kines. Yeah, kines. everybody okay. abbre- abbreviates it. Like kines, kines this is kines. Okay, I'm with you. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, I um, if you looked at my transcript, you'd see all these dance classes you know, in addition to the science stuff. So, yeah. So how do you transition from teaching and dance into what is a lot of science and, and then finally into, into career advice? Um, well, you know, once I couldn't find a job, there, were, there was a point at which uh, there were no teaching jobs in California. They, you know, kind of dried up. And if I wanted to teach, I was going to have to move out of state. And my parents didn't want me to do that. And, I wasn't too thrilled about it either. And so I just decided I'd get a job. And my first job was actually with um, our local newspaper here. It used to be big. It's not so big anymore. It was the Oakland Tribune. And I started in their advertising department, just being a clerk. And from there, I transferred into HR. And I I liked it. I liked what I saw there. And then from there on, on, I was kind of trying to get into HR. And so from all the other jobs that I had, I worked for a manufacturing company. You may know them, Mother's Cookies. They were around forever. Uh, yum, they yum, yum, had yum. their um, one plant in Oakland, California, for years and years and years while they were privately owned. And then they got sold long after I left. But um, you know, I worked for them and I worked in there as another clerk in their sales department. And then I got... I don't the next job after that i believe it it's a think in terms of years here you know i've been working a long time and i don't have my <laughs> resume up which is what i tell people not to do when you go to an interview well you, you know what let's, let's do you. this let's <laughs> let's jump into some of the advice that you're giving on your podcast exactly because who wants to know all that stuff everyone you know, well, i I, I love it and it's always amazing to hear how people get where they how they end up doing what they're doing so when we come back Let's jump right in and we'll talk about some of the career advice that you give on your podcast and things that people can expect from it. We'll be back in one second. 
California's insurance market can be challenging, but Sussman Insurance Agency knows the way. Trusted for two generations in home, auto, and personal insurance. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Navigate with confidence. Hello, hello. We are back. We are back. Thank you once again. And again, if you do have questions, you can call in at 559-656-0317 or are you ready for the really exciting way? You can also just dial pound 250 and then use the keyword insurance and that gets you through too. So something new that we've put together, pound 250 and keyword insurance will get you right through to us. So right before the break, I was getting us all riled up to talk about what people should do and what they should not do when it comes to being ready, preparing for interviews, preparing their resume and things like that. And since we have the expert, I'm gonna just put her on the spot. So Cindy, tell me, what are what do you think are the most important things someone should be aware of when they're putting together their resume? And I'll even ask you one other quick thing. How do you differentiate between, or is it just terminology, a resume and a CV? Or is it- um, CVs tend to be more in sciences and, um, you know, healthcare, they call it a curriculum vitae, um, but the rest of it's just called a resume and it's not a big deal if you call it, you know, one or the other, really, because the people that are looking at it know what it is. They don't care. A big deal. Yeah. But when you are thinking about putting your resume together, the first thing is you need to know what you're putting the resume together for. So you can direct that resume and have it be targeted to what you want. And when you are writing, um, your resume, there's different styles, and I, I won't get into all of that because that's a technical piece. You can find that online somewhere. You can actually go to my website, which is the, the name of my um, podcast. My website is www.insiderscareerclub.com, and I have resources there that talk to you about interviewing and putting your resume together and job search. So um, if you find things that I'm saying here, interesting, you can go there and you can find even more. And definitely subscribe to the podcast because I assume there's all sorts of fresh and updated info that, that comes through there. We'll definitely be putting a link to your to the podcast and to the website in the show notes for everyone to get if they're watching this on YouTube. So tell us, what, what, do, you, what do you tell people in general? And, not, and, I, and I know you could talk hours and hours and hours about it, but what are some of the things you see people do wrong when they're putting together their their resume things that you that as a an employer might look at and just immediately shake their head or just you know I shouldn't say look at as if they're holding it right as if yeah when they're looking at it on the screen and just click delete <laughs> and move on to the next one what are some of the pitfalls to look out for um well don't make it too long um especially if you're a new entry level worker your resume shouldn't be more than a page really um even my resume is for as long as I've worked it's uh, two pages. So, so keep it simple. You are, keep it simple and put down key things. And so it's it's not writing all the tasks and duties that you have. It's uh, talking about the responsibilities that you have. So you look at the bigger picture and you write those things out. And then also, um, so each as your, I would say the best is a chronological resume. So it starts where you are and it goes back. Um, it shows your education, um, any special training you have. It has that on there. Some resumes have a, um, a, a, a statement at the top of what you're looking for. Um, so those are things. There's lots of different styles of resumes. Uh, I believe I have that on my website, too, chronological um, then you may, <laughs> I don't want to say that, but for people that are trying to hide things, there's a different style. Of paper. <laughs> well, that's another, that's another question I'm sure you get all the time is what, what you know, if, if you've had a period of time where either you weren't working, I mean, we had the pandemic, things happened, mm-hmm. or you had a job that didn't go as long as you would have thought three mm-hmm. months later. Mm-hmm. It, what, what is there a, a guideline that you would suggest where you simply it's better to have a gap than it is to list something that was either that you did you didn't succeed in or, yeah. or was just not something flattering to you. Yeah, the truth is honesty because um, quite truthfully, what people don't realize is that if you lie about your experience that and you get hired, that is cause for termination. 
You know, the application form is a legal document. You lie on that and we find out you could be terminated. So why bother? Why do it? You know, just be truthful. So if you have a gap uh, in your resume, you can write the years in between. Let's say you worked till um, 2021 and um, with COVID, you ended up being laid off or you couldn't manage work in your children because they had to go to school at your house and you're managing that and all of the other stuff. Well, you and can't list you that as have, work. I think that should be yeah, listed as a job. Exactly. And um, you uh, were also caring for an ill family member because you're part of the sand- sandwich generation. Um, you know, put that on your resume that you either were laid off or you left your job voluntarily to do child care and to care for an ill uh, relative. So. Honesty uh, is the best know, So we policy. know what you were doing. Yeah, exactly. So we know what you were doing. You're not trying to hide it. And actually, that speaks well to your character because you take your parenting seriously. You take your family life seriously and you're dedicated to it. So, you know, and that works for male or female because I know that there are some males that do the same thing. The woman is, you know, their 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 um, wife is working and, and the male stays, stays home. I mean, it works for anyone. So be honest. Don't try to cover up stuff, um, you know, and just say what it is. And I've seen lots of resumes where, um, you know, it's it's pretty much spelled out. When you leave a job, I left this job because I took another job for a higher level position. Or I left this job because there was no growth opportunities. And that's an okay thing to say. You can put it on your resume if you want to, or you can tell the uh, recruiter when you speak to the recruiter that's going to do a phone screen if they're interested in your your work history so you know be honest and uh, don't shoot yourself in the foot by being dishonest i it's think it's hard that's, to remember that's... the lies you tell it's easy to remember the truth <laughs> i what i find interesting again i've got my insurance hat on is is you're saying that lying on your resume is grounds for termination and that of course you know big red flags are you know in a pop up in my mind because i'm thinking Wow, that that could potentially make things very different when people are hiring, because especially in certain states that are more difficult to terminate in, if there's something that's in writing that is false and that is grounds for termination, mm-hmm. that's a that's a big deal. And that's mm-hmm. not a that's a that's an albatross you don't want hanging over you forever with that position, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. And um, it may it may prevent you from getting the job in the first place. You may be in the offer stage or thinking that you're getting an offer. But when we do the background checks, you know, whatever other checks that we do, the um, um, the in, well, the background check and the reference checks, um, you know, we may find out different things. And so um, you want to be honest. Right. And that can be uh, a cause for not even extending an offer if a, or if a verbal one has been extended and you haven't gotten the, 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 you know, the offer letter in, in writing, uh, it gets rescinded. So. Well, not to mention the fact that if you're representing that you can do certain skills that you can't, it's a problem once you're actually in the job, we forgot mm-hmm. the obvious part, right? If you're making oh, yeah. stuff up that you can't do, then, you know, you're, you're going to end up in a, in a spot. Let, let's yeah. take the next step. So you've gotten the good resume in, and you've got the appointment for, to have the the interview. In your mm-hmm. experience, in you know we're 2024 at this point, are most interviews done face to face, human to human? Are they done virtually? And if so, what are some best practices that yeah. you could suggest yeah. that people keep yeah. in mind? There's a lot on this. So, um, just before I stopped working, which was right when the pandemic hit. And I decided not to go back and look for work and decided to do what I'm doing now. Um, we we had these needs and so we needed to continue to hire. So we did a lot of virtual interviews. And then because it's very important to meet the individual that you're hiring, after they did all the vetting, you know, after the phone screen was done, after the managers and team did a um, a full blown interview virtually, then we would bring the candidate in and they would meet with, you know, the hiring manager and maybe their department manager or someone, um, whoever was relevant at the time. And so that was what our process was. 
Now, because the pandemic went on so long and it really changed the world of work in so many ways. I can't begin. To Absolutely. Start yeah. But, um, and some for the better. Um, but virtual interviewing is now a part of most companies, uh, uh, way that they do interviewing. And, uh, okay. So there are rules that are general for all interviews, whether they're virtual or not, whether they're on site or virtual. And then there are some specific rules for virtual interviewing that I'd love to, to go over, but I'll start with the regular interviewing. So even before you apply for a job, you send that resume in, you go to the company website and you do your due diligence, you do your research and you should know what is important to you. Uh, in a company. So if you are um, a female or a minority, you might want to be sure that you check the um, diversity at the higher level. So you look at the executive team, you see who they are, you look at their work background, you know, you see where they've been, what have they done, um, and how long were they where they were? You know, it, it says a lot about a person. So, you know, look at them. Um, Look at the board of directors. Who's on their board of directors? That says a lot about the way a company is governed. If you look at those two bodies. It's interesting because you're talking about looking preemptively at the company before you even go to sit down with them. Is oh, that, before is you that, apply. Before even, you I was just going to say, wouldn't apply. you do that even before that? So, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you also, um, you know, people that don't do this, they get caught. Because if you don't look at the pipeline of products or what, you know, what they're going to be doing with regard to growing their products and services, um, then you're going to not know whether or not they've got something in the pipeline. So I was speaking to a client um, this week and she was trying to make a decision between where she is now and, and where she might want to go and where she is now, they don't have much of a pipeline. They have one product, but where she has an offer from they have several products and several indications. And this is obviously in pharmaceutical or biotech, which means that, oh, but of course, um, you know, yeah. like we've heard about the Bogovis and all of that. It's, a, sure. it's a, you know, was for diabetes, but now it's being used for weight loss. That's a different right. indication. So um, you, you just made me sit up a little straighter and, and suck <laughs> in my gut. So I'm oh, sorry, God. go ahead. Don't if I don't seem like there, I'm breathing, bro. that's because I'm just holding my stomach in. So go ahead. Yeah, don't even go there. But, you know, you've got to look at it because if a company has lots of products and services, if they're getting ready to release a new product, that means that they are they're building their their product line. They're busy. They're growing. There's going to be work for you. So looking and, for um, a company that has that you can see is basically going somewhere mm -hmm. is, is something important to look for so that you don't mm -hmm. end up in a position where there is no growth. And yeah, and it means that the, you know, people at the higher levels, those, those uh, execs, the department heads, everybody that's in charge, they're working to make that company move forward. And that's the kind of company you want to be in because it's going to be a company that's growing. It's a company that has lots of opportunity and you want to be there. Whereas it's a company that does not have that. Maybe they've been around a long time and they've just been doing the same thing over and over and over again. That may not work for you. It so, may not be around a long time because they aren't flexing and growing with whatever the job market is or the um, just the market in general. So you have to do your research, you know, read the press releases, look at the financials. If it's a big company and it's um, public, you can see how much money they have. And you can see how they've done over a period of time. If it's a private company, you will not be able to find the finances. It's very, very hard to find anything on a private company. But, you know, do what you can do. Look at the partnerships they have. That means that, you know, their business isn't just what they're doing. They've got partners that are, um, um, you know, promoting their, their products or services. So, you know, it means it's an active, it's a growing, it's a, it's a lucrative company. So, so those are the things you need to look at. And that's how you know that when you join a company that they're, that it ha it's stable. Okay. I guess Unless that something that's something that well. that's something what's amazing about everything you're saying, everything <laughs> from being honest on your resume 
to checking into the company that you're going to be applying to Mm -hmm. and then before an interview is so fascinating to me because what you're doing is you're putting yourself first, right? You're not afraid to tell the truth. You're not afraid to want to be with a company that that is has growth and is and has money Mm -hmm. and is doing well. And I think what's amazing about that is so many people don't realize that they need to look forward and they need to have confidence about what they offer and bring what they bring to the table. Absolutely. You know, when I used to tell my, um, uh, that Oakland youth work she talked about, I taught young people how to go out and find jobs. And so one of the ways um, that I would help them gain confidence, because these were inner city youth, right? And many of them didn't have the examples of working parents or, you know, working in certain environments or whatever. And so the philosophy that I taught them is, you think of yourself as a company. You are the CEO of your own company. Don't give the, the company all the power. You have power. You have control over whether or not you want to accept a position or not. And so when you are looking, you need to be, think from that perspective. It's, a, it's your company, you know, your own entity, and you're going to do your due diligence and make sure that wherever you go, as long as they're being honest, <laughs> you are doing uh, the right thing for you. And so that's a way to not feel like I'm so small. I'm going into this huge company. I'm going in. I'm the CEO of my own company. What are you going to do for me in my career? You're the CEO you of you. <laughs> like, exactly. Right. So that's the way to look at it. It kind of gives you some power so you're not feeling so helpless in the situation. So um, that's the that. first thing that you do. So you do your research, then you look at the job description. And as you are reading it, you should uh, pinpoint your experience that you have that aligns with that job description. So, um, you know, in other words, don't apply for something that you aren't qualified for, because if you don't have the experience as you're reviewing it, then don't apply for it because it's going to be a waste of your time. And you're setting you're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up for frustration. And even if you get hired, you're setting yourself up as we as you've mentioned now to be easily let go mm-hmm. at, at worst or even worse in a position that you don't know what to do in, which nobody likes to have a job that they're not comfortable because they don't know what they're doing, let alone yeah. if they were supposed to know how to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be challenges, whether you know something or not, there's always new things, but if you go into something and you've lied about your experience and you got hired sooner or later, you know, the, the proofs in the pudding, you know, it's going to surface that you are, Unless you are just a genius. <laughs> so no fake it till you make it. Like that. I, I've heard yeah. that so many times. Just fake it till you make it. You'll learn. They'll teach you on the job. Just get in, the, get your foot in the door. You, That's... I mean, there may be some things that you can fake it till you make it about. But if you don't know how to do the job, I mean, I can't go in and bluff my way and be a brain surgeon. I mean, that's not going to happen. You Thank know? goodness. You can't, uh, you can't just learn that. You have to go get the training. Um, and if I was a patient, I wouldn't want to have that person operating on my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. So, you, so you've done your research. You, mm-hmm. you've, you have, you've been honest. You have the interview schedule remotely, which is mm-hmm. sounds like that is the way. Give us some tips for when you're setting yourself up to have the the interview over Zoom or okay. whatever uh, okay. platform it might be. Talk a little bit about. How should you dress? Where should you look? What type of background? Oh, things like that. Oh, this for you, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> so it's phone screens and on-site interviews. Let me take care of that first, and then we'll go do the virtual because it's it's pretty long, and I want okay. to sure that people um, know that. So for on-site and phone screens, for your phone screen, you prepare as you would for an on-site interview. You know, do your research, do all of that, have your questions um, ready for them. Um, just be prepared. Um, you should have several examples of your work that demonstrate how you have used whatever skills they're asking for and how you did it successfully. And then you will be asked um, typically why you're interested in this company in this role. And because you've done your research, you can say, oh, I'm interested in your company. I, you know, I, I know about your products. I like what you're doing. I know that you have a pipeline. I like your executive team. 
that shows the recruiter that you have done your job and you're you are truly interested. You're not just applying for a job willy nilly. Um, you should also know what your salary requirements are um, because even though the recruiter cannot ask you that in California where we are, um, you need to know when you're looking at that job description because now it has the salary on there, is that going to work for you? Don't apply for a job that does not have um, the parameters of salary range that, that will work for you in your particular situation. Again, um, setting yourself up for failure. If, the, if they're offering X dollars and you need X mm-hmm. plus 10, don't mm-hmm. think you're going to be able to finagle them or convince them with your charm. To Not necessarily. I mean, you know, salary negotiations are just that. But, um, you know, you're not going to be able to negotiate um, unless you really have the experience um, from a, an assistant director level to an executive director level role, you know, the jump in salary from that. So, um, and then the other thing would be if I, as a recruiter, if I looked at someone that was a executive director and they applied for a much lower level position, I would wonder why they're doing it, you know? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I would so wonder so why be careful of it. being overqualified for certain mm-hmm. positions. Mm-hmm. Unless you say, you know, I am taking a step back. If you do in your cover letter, if you do one, I don't necessarily um, believe in cover letters because they don't necessarily get read. So it can be a waste of your time. I know other people purport that you should do a cover letter, but I don't necessarily. I think, you know, we want to see the resume. We want to see what you've done. Don't tell us what you've done. We want to see what you've done on your resume. It's so, always seemed um, a little bit redundant to me when, when I receive applications for mm-hmm. people that are coming to work for us and yeah. there's a cover letter. First, I wonder, did they change the one or two words and it's the same thing going everywhere, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And again, I'm going to be doing, like you said, I really would like to see the resume. I need to see what you've done, exactly. not if you're a good English major and we're able to, to, to put something together. I want to get into some more details about okay. like a, the virtual uh, interview. And let's Absolutely. do that as soon as we take a, a quick break. And then we're going to All dive right. into the, the Zoom interview. Oh, yes. Fun stuff. Sussman Insurance Agency, trusted for generations in navigating California's complex insurance market. For help with homeowners, fair plan, auto insurance, and more, call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Your friend in the insurance industry. Hello, hello. We are back and we are here with our special guest, Cindy Thomas, who is giving us all of the career advice and little little tidbits that we don't know that we should know. Remember, you can reach Cindy directly. I'm going to pitch her right now it is going go right to her Web page and subscribe to her podcast at the uh, Career Insider. It is Insider's the, Career Club. Your Insider's Career Club is the website. In my brain, it's it's the career insider because that's who you are. You are the, I'm career, the career insider. insider. Yes. We'll have a link in the show notes, and you can also contact. I know I'll get this right. Her by email at uh, Cindy Thomas ninety nine at gmail, and that's Cindy S I N D Y, which I will never forget because I spelled it incorrectly maybe <laughs> half a dozen times before. So before the break, we were just going to get into some some tips and tricks that you were going to share with us about the virtual interview, the, the camera okay. on the desk and what the, and, and how that works. So okay. the, the floor is yours. Give us all you got. All right. Okay. So first thing up, make sure if you're interviewing at home, make sure that your computer is up to the task. Make sure that you have downloaded Zoom, you download the WebEx and um, make sure too that your battery is charged and you have an uh, external source of supply of energy. So either plug that little computer in or have it handy so you can do that. I would just plug it in so you don't have to worry about it. That's one thing. Interesting. So don't let, so don't go dark in the middle of the interview. I suppose yeah, that's you important. Talking and boom, you know, you just die because there's no more energy. You don't want that. Right. And that's showing lack of planning, no matter how good you are. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And attention to detail. Yeah. So and then look at your space. Um, you know, if you are in a room that is used like my little office is for a bedroom at night for um, 
you know, other relatives, or um, it's the playroom for your kids, make sure that it's neat and tidy. You know, that says a lot about you. You're sitting at a computer looking at an interviewer and they're doing the same thing, but they're also checking out the background um, that's behind you. So make sure that everything is neat and tidy, uh, that you don't have whatever books you may happen to have out are titles that um, would be pertinent to a work situation or, you know, it's not pornography, it's not anything derogatory. Make sure that you've got that handled, okay? You, you don't want, you, you're not suggesting that they go as far as put banners up for the company's name with little hearts around no. them and things like that. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, and where do, you, where do you, what do you think about that, about that environment? So home, clean and neat and appropriate background is, mm -hmm. is acceptable. Do you and if think you that, can't do that, they can do a virtual, they can do a virtual background. Do you think that it's looked at with a jaundiced eye if there's something that's being manipulated like using a virtual background? No, no, because companies use virtual backgrounds all the time. So um, no, I don't think so. It just says that, you know, you, you value your privacy and you want to have this background and that's fine. You might want to have the background of being in a conference room or being in a library or, you know, whatever, but um, instead of rather than being at the beach, but, um, you know, something that is professional. Yeah. Something, you know. something tastes, that's right. Because everyone started out the pandemic on zoom and everyone had the same beach scene background. I can't tell you how many times I saw the same, you know, default zoom beach <laughs> background. It be, it was right. I was, it became comical because we were all at the beach. Sure. Actually, we're all locked up in our houses right now, but yeah. this is this is the background we all selected. What I, I have the image now of somebody creating a special background for a company where in the background they put, you know, their names, comma, president of that company's name, you know, oh, something right. cute, uh, something yeah. cute like that. I I would probably get a kick out of that as an employer, but I I, I guess everyone has to do what they're comfortable with. So yeah. virtual is okay as long as it's professional and it's not yes silly like at the beach i think that makes a lot of sense yeah and yeah. or or whatever you have if you have the choice between your bedroom let's say that's neat and tidy or perhaps if you have an office environment you have a home office or mm -hmm. you can go to a friend's place of employment and sit at their desk mm -hmm. do you think one or the other makes a difference um you know very often people live in one bedroom apartment so maybe you know you're your husband and your toddlers in the living room, so you can't interview there. But if you're um, um, interviewing in your bedroom, just you know, try using the closet or try using. Well, windows aren't so good because that's behind you and it distorts the picture a lot. But try to find a wall that um, is kind of basic. You know? Oh, you didn't mean go in the closet. You said no. toddler, and I thought you were saying escape the noise, go hide in the closet and do the interview. You meant as a background. All right, I understand. Yes, exactly. Let's okay. not stick your toddler in the in the closet. Uh, <laughs> other tips, <laughs> other tips are make sure that your um, your camera and your um, laptop are elevated so that you aren't looking up like this and you're not looking down. You want to be looking straight forward at the interviewer because. Interviewing virtually, um, it, it creates certain uh, obstacles for you to overcome. If you're in a room with someone, you get the feel of them, you see them, you can reach out and touch them, but you can't do that virtually. So you need to, you need to be able to make the connection as best you can. So look at your interviewer. Um, you may not want to look at their eyes. I have a, a habit of looking people dead in their eyes. So I guess some people are. You give them the death I stare. Know. You're looking at their yeah, soul. I don't do the death stare, but I do <laughs> check from time to time. But if that makes you nervous, you can look right uh, at their forehead and it still looks like you're looking at them. Um, so that's another tip. Get a lot of rest so you're well rested and you can think on your feet because if you're tired, you're not going to be able to, to recall the things that you want to recall when you need to. Um, Make sure that your background noise is as quiet as can be. How important is how important do you think the audio factor is? Because you know, you know, you do a podcast, I do a radio show. We we mm -hmm. do, and we I know we we go out of our way to be sure that the sound is well, at least as yeah. good as we can get it, right? Yeah. And yeah. do you think that there's a, a psychological aspect? So if you're interviewing, if you invest 
eight dollars on on a little lapel mic maybe from amazon to plug into your computer so that you really have there there's not so much background noise and that you sound more you sound clearer and more professional mm-hmm. perhaps more professional. you think that's a worthwhile thing to do sure absolutely it's not something you have to do i mean some people have very um commanding voices men have more resonance and and bass in their voice so they may not need to do that but a, a woman that speaks really softly might want to do something like that that's an mm-hmm. excellent suggestion um you should also put your cell phone on mute and if you actually happen to have a home phone uh turn the ringer off interesting at your right yes at your fingertips you should have your resume the job description your list of questions anytime you interview with someone you need a list of questions what because type of questions would you would or do you think are appropriate to ask? Um, questions about the job, questions about the company. You can even ask the interviewer, well, how long have you been here and how do you like it? And, um, you know, what does your department do? How do you interact with this role? I mean, those are valid questions. So it just gives you a better understanding of what's going on uh, within the company. These are things you wouldn't know just from reading the job description. You should also have water, a pen and paper handy in case you want to write something down, some Kleenex. Um, What, to start crying when they tell you how how silly you are? Oh, hold on, blow your nose. (laughs) (laughs) Or if you sneeze, I mean, that can happen. Um, So what, you say that can happen, and and of course questions pop in my head. So let's let's talk about the times that stuff doesn't go the way we want. So you're in an interview, you're in a virtual mm -hmm. interview, and the dog is barking. Let's just pick something simple and mm-hmm. benign, right? I'm a dog lover. So of course I would stop the interview and I, and, and I would look at the applicant and I'd say, Oh, let me see who you have. Let me see who you have. I would get all excited. Mm-hmm. But what, what should the average, if someone's applying and something does go wrong, let's just say a dog starts barking, acknowledge it. Don't acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. Say, hold on, go put the dog away. What, what um, is the best well, way to deal you, with that? If you could have put the dog away, you should have put the dog away before <laughs> the interview, but maybe you, don't maybe your dog is like my dog my dog likes to be with me 24 7 he follows me around the house he lies in here when i work on a daily basis but when i do do podcasts i bring him downstairs my sister takes care of him and we give him treats to keep him quiet um but you may not that's have a that lucky option. dog yeah he is so spoiled anyway <laughs> <laughs> um uh you know but sometimes I forget I have done podcasts because he can be very quiet. He's just lying here, you know, and he um, just sneaks in. Yeah. Or, or he'll, he'll scratch. And then you hear is all of his dog tag. And he's <laughs> like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot. I forgot the dog was in here. I so is that, oh, is that, so you're saying it's better acknowledge it, acknowledge the, 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 the faux pas versus just pretend, mm-hmm. Oh, I don't hear the dog barking and and growling and, and having a fit mm-hmm. and running around in the background. You should say something mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, and you you know you can actually say something ahead of time. Say, I have a dog. He you may he may bark. Um, hopefully he won't. <laughs> or I have a child that's in the other room, but hopefully you know, they, they won't bark they, either. They might come in, so I just want to alert you to that. And um, if that happens, we'll take care of it. Interesting. But, so know. preemptive again is, is mm-hmm. to let them know in advance if you don't have the confidence that that you will be able to secure a quiet environment for exactly. whatever reason. To give them a heads up about that up front. That's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I mean, in, even not just in interviews, let's say you're working. If you're working and your child is yelling and screaming, I had a call with one of my managers and it was the most, I don't want to say distressing, but it was annoying for sure. <laughs> Her child screamed throughout and she must have been right by her side just and she never said anything about it she never put her microphone on mute she you know if that's happening put your mic on mute until you speak so that the other person doesn't have to listen to it it's annoying and it's rude so um you know keep those things in mind it's all about the first impression and by the way you know you got about five seconds to make a first impression so you got to come out strong and um, dress the way that you should dress if you. Oh, you beat me to the punch. Talk to me about 
about the attire. <laughs> the attire. But, but actually, before you do that, take one second. I have to tell you a story that you will appreciate. Okay. I was speaking with the second at uh, second in command, I guess you could say, the VP of an insurance company during the pandemic. This is someone that normally you don't talk to in general, but we were talking about some strategic ideas together. And he's in his backyard and he's sitting in his chair and we were, you know, we were on Zoom together. And the background was his son playing with their golden something, some Retriever, type of, whatever. and this dog is basically mauling the child <gasps> playfully, but it was uh -huh. like a scene from Airplane. He, they're rolling around and, and his mouth and you snap, snap, and the kid's laughing and falling. And, and, the, and, the, and here's this very professional you know, executive and he's sitting there talking to me. He's wearing a tie, this is early pandemic, right? He would still try and dress nice. And he's in his tie and we're talking and I'm, and I'm literally trying to not say something and I couldn't decide. So I, actually I'll ask you too, if, should you say something? If you see something like that, like you, you, mm, you maybe you want to just turn around because your son is, is basically being, you know, made into kibble or, or mm -hmm. do you just, if it's on their end, you just ignore it. Well, you know, there's a power struggle there. You know, there's a difference in power. So you have to take that into consideration. If I'm speaking to my SVP or um, the CEO of a company and I'm on Zoom and that's going on, um, I may not tell them to knock it out. But I might say, is your child okay? <laughs> well, take a minute and check in on your child because it looks like they might not be okay. And you can take it from that perspective and they might catch the hint. If they don't, then just leave it alone. <laughs> and just enjoy the ride. All right. Yeah, sorry. I, I didn't mean to take you on that tangent, That's but every okay. time we talk about Zoom interviews or anything along those lines with, with high end and people, I always remember that story. So we were talking about dress. All right. So dress. talk to us. Very what important. is appropriate yeah, before we run out of time? Dress is very important. So um, you can ask your recruiter, what's the dress like? How should I dress? You know, it's business casual. OK, if there's any doubt, dress up. You know, you're the one looking for a job. The interviewer has a job. Think of it that way. You know, present yourself in a manner that's going to get you the job. So that I like that. I mean. When in doubt, dress up. So you mm -hmm. think that it's always better to be overdressed than to show because again we're at home they know mm -hmm. you're at home for the most part mm -hmm. and is there the expectation from an from a potential employer that you would get dressed up really for a um, an in-person you know video call i think that the employer is expecting you to come across as a professional so it also depends on the level of position if you're interviewing for a managerial role you may not have to wear a tie, but maybe you should put on a jacket, you know, and a shirt. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, you don't have to put on a full blown suit, but, you know, make an effort. And what that shows is and it also depends on who you're interviewing with. You're interviewing with senior level people dress up because, you know, it shows respect. It shows right. that you're a professional right. and you respect them enough to dress up and you want them to look at you as a professional. So and that's very important. So give us some of this, uh, give us some details for, for men. What, what is appropriate? Is it a tie always? Is it a, a button down shirt? Is it a polo shirt? How, what level would you say is You know, it safe? could even if, if you're at home and you're putting on a suit jacket, it could be a polo shirt, but it also depends on the industry because if you're in tech, they don't dress up necessarily. A right. nice shirt, a button down shirt, one, or one that is not, and a pair of pants, khakis or whatever, um, is appropriate. Even jeans are appropriate. Uh, well, nobody I'm can still, see from the waist down. I wasn't even going to yeah. go there. I don't know yeah. what people are wearing from the waist down. I don't want to know what they're wearing from the waist down. <laughs> yeah, in some cases, yeah. And, um, you know, so, you know, just think about who are you interviewing with? Um, what's the role that you're interviewing with? And just appropriately for that, as you would if you're going in for dinner. So dress as if you were you had that job. If it's a tech job and they tend to be more casual, you still want to, you want to still dress up. However, you don't want to be ridiculous. You don't want to make yeah, them feel like you don't want to wear a suit because the CEO is not going to wear a suit. I, I spoke to a CEO of a startup the other day. He had on a, um, it wasn't a hoodie, but it was the, um, a Sherpa pullover. Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, and I think I had mine on too. So, cause that's what I wear around the house. It keeps me warm, but, um, <laughs> You know, it just depends. And we were just talking as 
just getting to know each one another. I wasn't applying for work or anything. So it's um, it's a lot easier for men. I will say that my I I've jokingly is. said in the past that for me, if if there's reincarnation, my my reincarnation hell would be to have to be a woman because I would never be able to figure out how to dress. I would never be able to figure any of that out. So give us some yeah. uh, give us an idea of what would a woman how how should a woman dress or the, is it same pretty much the same guidelines? Well, yeah, she can wear a nice blouse. She can wear a nice sweater like this one if it's kind of casual. Or she can wear a suit jacket too if she's interviewing for a um a higher level role. And you the know? and is the and does the the mantra better dress up than dress down the same for a woman? Yeah. The same for everyone. Same for everyone. Mm-hmm. The same for everyone. And so yeah. You know, as as we get ready to, to to wrap up, you you've been such a wealth of information, and I, I I can't tell you how much how important this is. As an employer, I interview people, so and there are some things that I could tell you that are just immediate. Eh, it doesn't matter. I I don't care how perfect they are. Once X mm-hmm. Y or Z happens, I'm I'm done with it. And I think what people need need to do is to invest the time to talk to people like you that have the expertise mm-hmm. that have the experience that can really coach them through the process because it's such a competitive environment right now. So yes, competitive that is. you, like we talked about, I don't remember if it was before we came on or not, you have to do everything humanly possible to stand out from the crowd. And, and with that, I want to thank you so, so much for being with us today. And I will put all of your contact information spelled correctly on the, <laughs> on the video link and on the podcast and, and everywhere else. I, I thank you so much, Cindy, for being um, here. Oh, I appreciate the invite. It was fun. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks again. You're welcome. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. The show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.